Finally, today is the day when we are going to install the engine on our favorite first gen Honda CRV. Lots of work, lots of details, we'll cover pretty much everything. Yeah, should be fun. Let's get started. Alright, let's take the driver's side wheel off. We need to get access to that part of the engine bay from the side and underneath. We have to do that and dive into the engine bay. As you can see, we don't have the engine. It's pretty empty looking. We have a transaxle, like a automatic transmission and no engine, but no worries, we're going to install it. Transmission out there, the transmission input shaft, I already put a new seal. Why not to do it? Because we're right there. Right, now we have to put our vehicle on blocks. Make sure we're safe to go underneath. Let's cut a 2x4 and make a shim to make sure our vehicle will sit on blocks steady. And look at that. Two big locks and all rigid salt and we're safe to work underneath. It is a pretty cool look from underneath, no engine, well, it's coming. I still have my strap holding the transmission up, but now we have to take a strap off and uh, jacket it up, a transmission, and keep it leveled, and the engine is coming pretty soon. Yeah, guys, if you have any questions, comments, critics, suggestions, concerns, put everything down in the comment section below. Okay, I'm taking the strap off. Now we're leveled, which is good. As I can see, I put a rug underneath to prevent my fender from getting scratched. Beautiful. We're outside in the woods and it's getting windy, but we have to do the job here's a torque converter ready to go here's a ATF transmission fluid recommended by Honda yeah all materials I'm using I'll put down in the description below okay let's wipe the flange on a torque converter make sure it's clean and uh, yeah no scratches all good and I'm going to apply the ETF fluid make sure our torque converter will get into the seal lubricated and won't have any dry contact between metal and rubber seal like that you don't need much just a little bit something like that yeah put some on the splines and uh, that will make it happy okay let's wipe the shaft make sure it's all clean Check it out, and I'm also going to apply a light coat of ADF fluid on the splines. There's an input shaft, the hydraulic ADF fluid pump, transmission pump, splines as well, and it, it goes like one over another, and uh, make sure everything lubricated. Lubricant is our best friend, don't need much, just a little bit something like that all right good enough all right let's put a torque converter back in place and it only will go in one way and it needs to be fully in flash with a bell housing otherwise engine won't connect you can feel it how it goes on the splines turn it wiggle it a little bit and it will get all the way in you will feel the step, then in, and then you wiggle it, turn it, and it go, will go. Yeah, something like that, turning, and try to match the splines. Now it's spinning a little bit, freely, because it's not fully engaged. Okay, now it's in. I will show you an angle, and as you can see, now torque converter is fully in, and it's flash with a bell housing that's how it should be if it's not fully engaged you have to make it happen otherwise transmission won't match the engine you won't be able to install the motor okay here's our engine we'll put some just a little bit of engine oil on those guide pins to align the engine and transmission we'll make the 
first contact easier. I replaced the rear main seal, front seals, cams and front crank seal. Videos will be down in the description below. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Why not to do it when we have the engine out? Okay. My engine is hanging on a hook. I'm using a cherry picker. This one I pick it up for $100 used on a local classified. Works great. Alright, let's lift the hood up, open it up all the way. We need extra room. I put that matte flap, make sure it won't scratch the windshield. And I'm using the strap to hold the hood up, make sure it won't snap and will drop down on me. Okay, I decided to remove the hood stand. It's on the way. Now we're coming close. All right, almost there. Let's align the best as we can. Here we go. And let's start dropping the engine down slowly. We don't need to go fast. Take your time and everything will be good. See, I still don't have my harmonic balancer installed. We'll get to it later a bit and yeah check make sure nothing is caught in on it it's going down smooth yeah it's a step-by-step -step process it's easy it's doable just need to think about it what's the next step ahead and make sure you're doing it right first go nothing takes longer than job you have to do twice yeah all right, we're half in. It's already a success. Engine is coming down. Checked on the back as well. Sometimes uh, those hoses lines like to caught on each other. And we're going lower. Oh, here we go. A little bit more. Check the front and slowly, slowly leveling engine with the transmission. Yeah, here we go. Almost there coming all right I'm checking the clearances make sure we're coming down straight nothing is on the way especially on the back it's hard to see make sure you don't have any wiring harnesses hoses caught in against the engine it's so easy to break things when you drop in the heavy engine okay we have to do a little bit of drop let's just drop another inch and we're almost there I'm doing it for the first time on a Honda CRV I done quite a few engine swaps before but never did it on Honda CRV but like any other vehicle you just need to follow the factory specifications if you don't know something and uh, yeah, the common sense and basic mechanic skills. You don't need to be an expert. Okay, as you can see, pins, they're aligned with the uh, holes. That's why we lubricated that those pins with the engine oil. Now it's sliding easy. And uh, our pins are both on, aligned. And now I'm going to start a uh, upper bolt. Just pull the engine closer to the transmission I'm just starting the bolt we have to get transmission fully aligned vertically and make it plumb and uh, same thing on another side upper bolt right at the top I found that when you do the top bolts then bottoms will come way easier so we're not tightening that to specs yet we just snagging them and remember we have more bolts to put in and you have to keep a little bit of room to wiggle to catch the thread sometimes you have to do that because clearances are very tight okay as you can see bolt is coming and very important part make sure all fasteners are clean, prepared, and ready to go and clean the threads if you need it. Because nothing can be worse than you have issues 
with a faster snapping bolts breaking something or not be able to thread it all the way okay now I'm going to align the rear engine mount with the bushing on a subframe pull that wiring a bit up and put a bolt and uh, get engine supported on the transmission it's pretty pretty easy when you <laughs> have the, the right tools the tools are always essential okay well must we need to tap tap a little bit to align the holes and that big bolt will get through as you can see I'm using a punch to align the holes from underneath here we go well we have to tie that bolt I'm only running those bolts all the way in snagging a little bit and not torquing them yet all right as you can see we have one two two more holes to align and get those bolts in still have one on that side transmission mounting bolts let's align the bracket As you can see why it's important to keep everything loose at the moment and all right piece of cake now I can put a bolts and uh, get that part ready yeah as you can see everything is pretty much straightforward you work behind the engine on the left on the right underneath at the top on the front and just keep a pattern going around and pretty much everything is in reverse in the opposite way how we remove the engine I have a video <laughs> it has been three years probably and uh, yeah if you forgot something you can always refer to that removal video okay now I'm stirring those rear transmission engine mounting bolts back there you go there's a bottom engine support as well for the transfer case all right that's in I started tied it and now we're going to the right side all those little hoses wiring harnesses we have to get all that back in place connected we have some work on the front and our engine is now leveled and we still have a crane holding the engine up and that mount is in it's good and we have to get a front mount as well as you can see it's a front upper mount we have one more on the bottom on the very bottom let's do this upper driver's side engine mount to pull the engine up and that way engine can be supported on all sides okay I'm lifting the engine up with my crane and aligning those studs yeah okay nuts are ready all clean and I also like to apply light coat of anti-seized compound it pre pre prevents rust and corrosion and uh, bolts and nuts won't seized up at some point if you or someone else will need to take it apart it will make a life much easier okay mm -hmm. starting those nuts just running them down and we'll go and torque everything after we found finished with the mountain brackets as you can see it's coming up I will speed up a process pretty easy and uh, mostly just wrenching okay that's done now we have to check to make sure everything is aligned properly all bolts are in now that one can go and yeah let's drop our chain down and engine is installed it's installed <laughs> it's connected to the transmission and it's all mounted in but we have tons of stuff around to connect and put it back but that's all minor 
biggest part is done as you could see it didn't take us long with the editing a little bit it took me probably half an hour but on the video it's a bit faster but not a big of a deal easy peasy okay anti seized now we're putting that long big bolt at the back bottom engine mount engine is supported and now I can wiggle it it has a uh, some damping on bushings and bolt is going in nice okay now I'm tightening that bolt there we go beautiful okay we have mountain brackets in place we're only missing one on the very bottom but that's for later okay time for torque converter bolts as you can see that reference mark we did when we separated the engine from the transmission and torque converter was pulled out I'm starting those tiny little 10 mil bolts by hand first Make sure we're not cross threading and we have a bunch of them around yeah that yeah. guys if this video is helpful put a thumbs up very appreciating that okay it's good for now with the torque converter let's uh, tie the transfer case uh, bracket down and uh, get it torqued to specs then we'll get back to that torque converter later we have to install the front accessories bracket and put our harmonic balancer and then we'll get back to torque converter and get that done yeah yeah this is how it works for me okay we're back to the front and this is the AC compressor bracket with a idler and we have bottom front mounting attachment bracket there as well all right four bolts we have to put it back it mounts at the bottom left front of the engine or the AC compressor we need to do that and uh, get our front part and bottom all put together but that bracket needs to go first okay let's start it I will speed up the process starting all the bolts tighten them up and torque it and we're ready to install our AC compressor we didn't disconnect the AC lines I'm not sure if AC works on this vehicle never ever seen this engine running okay now we are ready to put AC compressor back in place bracket is installed those bolts are torqued I'm skipping certain minor steps like torquing and things because this video is already 49 <laughs> minutes it's getting too long if I will be very very detailed it probably will go up to four five hours try to be reasonably short as possible and long as necessary okay AC compressor is in all torqued okay time for power steering pump and as you can see we didn't drain the power steering fluid all fluid is still there and um, yeah okay let's uh, start the power steering bolts and always start bolts by hands make sure, make sure it's aligned okay power steering reservoir put it in place like that now our cruise control booster uh, vacuum actuator yeah let's mount that guy same way it came off here we go it's in place beautiful yeah surprisingly enough everything's pretty simple on this CRV okay those bolts tight okay alternator time alternator is not a fun spot to get it's on the bottom at the very back of the engine by the firewall and I don't like the location but it is what it is okay I line the bottom long 
hole with a bracket and now we have to put that bolt bolt is in all align upper one is coming for tensioning starter time okay starter is much easier it's right at the top of the transmission on a left yeah starting those starter boards starting starter bolts yeah okay now I will tighten them up and um, get that part done as you can see we're slowly getting less and less components to install and everything will just come as a puzzle in one picture and uh, yeah I found myself pretty good even putting things together after a long period of time it takes me less time to put things together than take it apart okay our radiator time with the fans and shroud everything in one assembly as you can see slide it in pulling that low pressure AC line out getting that bottom radiator hose underneath something like that take your time it's coming no rush I don't like to rush things I like to take my time but do it fast as I can and keep that quality work in place yeah okay that's all fitted now we have to get those hoses and brackets okay radiator support brackets at the top on the bottom make sure you have those bushings check them out tie the brackets up okay CV axle time let's tie the CV axle support bearing to the engine block as you can see it's on the side pretty straightforward just under the oil filter yeah you can see GoPro is showing that those hidden cool angles you can see okay that's done we're moving all to that left side at the top on the passenger side not left right sorry okay connecting those hoses I will just um, skip that part because it will take forever for me to film I will just go and do it okay our transmission cooling lines now we're connecting to the radiator okay upper radiator hose here we go let's put that clamp back yeah and uh, if you have any questions comments uh, critics put everything down in the comment section below under the video okay another hose to connect more connectors yeah Ooh, this one is going it's a low radiator hose coming to the back okay now we have that heater core hoses to connect all those things yeah the first generation CRV probably is one of the most reliable best Honda's Honda Motor Co Company ever built Honda CRV first generation, also known as RD1, RD3 models. Okay, let's connect a cooling line to the throttle body. And this vehicle was produced between 1997 up to 2001. Okay, connecting the vacuum line to the pressure regulator. Here we go. Put a clamp back and yeah assembly lines were in Japan United Kingdom Taiwan Thailand Philippines Indonesia yeah it's pretty cool and uh, by the way in Indonesia they build this vehicle till 2002 year longer than anywhere else yeah well lots of little small lines another vacuum line this one is going to the brake booster time for the fuel filter okay uh, there's a two copper ceiling 
washer on the bungee bolts. We're not going to replace the filter at the moment. I don't have it yet. We'll do it later. Put a video down in the description how to replace it. Okay, snack tight, good. Fuel lines are connected. Let's connect our fuel injectors, electrical connectors. Well, you might think uh, why we only have one engine, two liters B20B, and later they modified B20Z. And uh, yeah, this only one engine was installed on this vehicle. No diesels, no bigger engines, no smaller. Yeah, only four cylinders, uh, two liters. That's very surprisingly enough because in Japan they like to put multiple engines in one model. But unfortunately Honda CRV didn't get it. Okay, we have to do some work on the back still. Most of it done have some plugs and electrical connectors and let's connect those ones connector on the bottom the throttle body throttle body positioning sensor yeah all the good stuff and uh, on this rv well this generation didn't last long the short line production four years B20B engine, in my opinion, is very underpowered for this vehicle and it's only 126 horsepower. Later on, they bumped it up slightly, that power, but still wasn't enough. All right, let's um, connect our ground cable. Good grounds are very important for the operation of any electrical circuit. And uh, yeah, there's kind of disappointing because uh, this is a all-wheel drive vehicle and you wish you will have more power on your wheels but no they only ended up with this tiny engine and uh, no turbocharged or supercharged models okay ground cable is tying all good and then now we're moving to the front left driver's side we have to connect the crank sensor let's get that wiring harness down make sure it's coming straight between the alternator and the engine block and connects to the piggy tail which is coming from the crank sensor crank sensor is behind the front cover yeah it's pretty kind of uncomfortable to get to it on hondas but it is what it is well that is connected now we're going to the top we'll connect a throttle cable align those slots on the th throttle butterfly dial align lock it in pull it out a little bit and uh, yeah it's not coming yet but you have to align the hole slide that bushing in and get a cable on the rail and here we go all in place now we're tightening the bracket we're not going to do any adjustments yet just putting everything's back in place same way we removed if we need it we'll adjust it level beautiful it's operational it's working i'm pushing the gas pedal okay let's um see what we have in a transmission i already put um, some atf fluid as you can see it's fresh new fluid is in but we will check it later now it's to the upper mark there is what's required but when engine will be idling we'll check and edit if it's necessary air filter cleaner box air induct to the throttle body air intake all coming together make sure we won't have any leaks let's tie all those clamps tie the air filter box there's a connectors for the fans make sure those guys are connected all good click nice and easy check in Go and check many times as you need. Make sure you connected everything. Okay, our idler air control valve is coming back. It's on the back of the intake manifold. 
nice and tight all connected yeah very important here we go electrical connector there time to put a fresh engine oil haven't put it yet and uh, now we're going to do that okay we'll put the engine oil specified to this vehicle all information about fluid capacities according to the Honda CRV service repair manual I will put down in a description below under the video check it out and we're right at the top mark see that little hole drill but our engine oil filter is still empty it will take some oil when we'll start the engine and we'll check it later good for now and remember engine oil is cheap engines are expensive okay coolant expansion reservoir or coolant bottle or tank let's put it back connect it to the overflow valve on the radiator neck okay it's all in place and time to put a engine coolant what else will top it up a radiator and if necessary we'll add it up more and uh, we'll purge the air later now we're put in fluids make sure we have them up to the top level is required and I'm also filling the expansion reservoir to the maximum mark we still have some air pockets in the system and the coolant jackets but it's okay it's good for now we'll deal with that later one step at the time no rush all is coming good together okay let's tie that cap ground cable another one make sure grounds all clean tight and no corrosion on the cable as well cables are cheap if you need it replace it poor grounds can cause so many electrical issues yeah okay that cable is connected all tight all right we have more things to put back together by the way there's a great youtube channel i found uh, just recently called the honda resource that guy knows about the hondas pretty much everything it was crvs and uh, i watched quite a few of his videos and uh, yeah thumbs up good stuff very helpful content and uh, yeah lots of things to learn from each other yeah make sure everything's back in place how it used to be all those hose clamps all brackets supports and so on okay now we're putting that little bracket back you will see why we need that it's very small things but important there's a uh, no mo small things uh, the everything is important that's for the ground strap support so you can see make sure the cable is staying in place and one wiggle all over the place here we go nice and tight zip tight is there and now we're tied to the engine block all right remember we're taking that hood stand now it's back in place nice and clean time for the harmonic balancer slots are aligned and now we're putting a key key in one key for the harmonic balancer and another key for the crank sprockets for running your timing belt as you remember when we were taking apart here we go all in place locked now time for the crank bolt put in a grease behind the bolt head and a washer according to the Honda CRV first gen service repair manual you have to do that make sure it tights properly and one have a dry contact and uh, also manual tells us to put a little touch of grease on the tip only on a tip of the crank bolt like that yeah it makes sense it will make the bolt go easy in start it and now it spins and uh, yeah that is what our manual is telling us yeah let's put a harmonic balancer crankshaft pulley bolt in in place 
as usual we always start every fastener by hand here we go now I have a specialty tool as you can see there is a part number to hold the sprocket in place you see that octagon shape profile in the sprocket now we're going to use our 19 mil deep socket for tightening that bolt I got that uh, specialty tool from Amazon I think like 20 bucks and uh, yeah let's lock our pulley see I'm putting my braking bar and gaze a tow hook on the bottom of the frame that way I can tighten the bolt otherwise crank will spin okay just a wire to hold the braking bar in place now we have our crank pulley locked I have an extension and uh, to keep it straight I'm using a jack stand there's a way to do it it's <laughs> very complicated okay and let's tighten it up and torque it because I use a longer extension I added a little bit of torque yeah here we go nice this is done well not quite everything is ready for the firing the engine up but it's all tight on that side as you can see yeah you need that specialty tool otherwise there's no way you can hold that pulley from turning and uh, yeah you need it okay now we can get back to our torque converter bolts now we can turn the engine over with the ratchet and get to the rest of the torque converter bolts as you can see same thing what we did on the very very beginning 10 mil just snag them for now and turning the crankshaft and get into the second third fourth screw yeah like any other vehicle pretty much you have to start those bolts and then we'll torque them in a cross pattern yeah there's one more left do it right follow the manual everything's the best way to get it you just buy the manual I bought that service repair manual a paper copy for hundred dollars yeah very very helpful to pay it back okay yeah now I'm going underneath again and we have to torque everything I will speed up the process yeah it's pretty boring to make this video too long but this is probably helpful information for someone who's going to do the same thing and it's not like entertaining video but it's more like yeah by helping each other okay putting the torque connector covering plate back in place everything there will speed up the process and we are coming to the point when we have to get our what exhaust right down pipe from the exhaust manifold to the resonator now we have to do that part I have old new rings aka seals yeah make sure we won't have any exhaust leaks as I remember when we were removing those uh, studs snapped they broke now I have to replace it with a new one angle grinder is my help I'll get a all new bolts yeah pretty straightforward now let's punch that broken stud out it is stuck inside the flange and time to make it better yeah make sure pipe is clean yeah okay there's a replacement tensioning bolts I just got them from Rock Auto nice I will apply a little bit of anti-seized compound special on exhaust parts just in case if I will need it 
to take it apart it will all come out dealing with the old rusted seized up exhaust fasteners can be the problem can turn into the nightmare from the doing the simple small job into the big project when those studs and bolts break okay i'm connecting the downpipe to the exhaust manifold and now all the way to the resonator all nice in place now we we'll have those bolts in all connected i have to tie them those springs are holding the tension on the flange and preventing leaks yeah all those fasteners which compromised by the time we have to replace it yeah, no point to use the old stuff they're pretty cheap those bolts like pair cost me like ten dollars yeah not a big of a deal use the good parts all right now we're going out again and time for the belts so we have power steering belt alternator belt ac belt i don't like that design it's kind of old school technologies now we have one serpentine belt with the automatic tensioner instead of having three belts with the three tensioners like for an example my 2004 dodge caravan one belt one automatic tensioner piece of cake so easy so simple instead of having three okay alternator belt is going first it's on the back of the harmonic balancer pulley then as you can see we have our ac compressor belt second one and there's a tensioner up to the power steering pump yeah we have to put all of them back and um, set attention all right yeah you got an idea yeah one more belt left and those belts are still fine i'm not putting new ones they're almost like new okay now time to set attention on the belts prime the alternator out and tighten that upper alternator bolt and then we'll get to the bottom make sure it's all tight and set attention yeah i will put a specs for the belt tension down in the description according to the honda service service repair manual but it's pretty simple pretty easy all right and our last power steering belt is coming as well yeah that's what i'm saying like for example if you have to r replace your alternator belt you have to remove three other belts it is what it is yeah this video is only for demonstration how i do it and uh, it worked for me yeah and um if it works for you let me know what did you do different interesting and um it's a learning curve first time installing the engine on honda crv not that difficult honestly but not much fun okay let's tighten those bolts and uh, as you can see my belt is on and we have to set a tension all right tension is there let's put a heat shield on our front side of the engine with the exhaust manifold pull the dipstick out get it through the hole all in nice okay i also use the anti-seized compounds on those 10 mil nuts all right finally we have pretty much in everything is connected in place i hope I didn't miss anything I'm going to check one more time everywhere but so far all parts are back nothing's left on the floor everything's connected here all belts are there we only have to put that bottom bottom support bracket it's temporarily installed I'm waiting for a new one to arrive and we'll replace it but for now it will do the job and uh, yeah temporarily for the tests and purposes we have to put it make sure everything's in place but then later on we'll deal with certain things if we need okay 
bottom. Splash shield is back. Put in those plastic Phillips clips. And uh, let's put our tire. It has been 45 minutes since we took that tire off. Of course it took longer. In real, it took me roughly probably three and a half, five hours to get everything, everything. That's how long did it take, which is not too bad, especially doing it for the first time on Honda CRV. I would say no rush. I enjoy it. Okay, fresh gas. <laughs> Put it in a tank after a long time sitting project. Can cleaning the battery clamps. Make sure we have a good connection on the battery terminals. I hope everything is right. We have a spark. We have a crank cam correlation. We have the fuel. And remember, our fuel system is still dry, empty. We have to turn the key to the on position. Wait it for the fuel pump to prime the fuel up the fuel rail crank it it won't probably start right away i know it won't but we have to do this several times i'm doing it right now and uh, yeah let's try to crank it over yeah she's trying to fire and not getting a fuel and uh, yes yeah, slowly building up the pressure and uh yeah turn it off yeah Prime it again and uh, she should fire. Let's prime it again and get a fuel pressure build up and she should fire. Here we go. Yeah. Beautiful. All air pushed out from the fuel system and now we're running. First start. Awesome. Very, very satisfying feeling. Yeah, when you put so much time, so much work, so much effort, and you see your engine is running, that's a WD-40 is burning on the exhaust manifold. Everything's working. He's pulling like a kitten. Warming up idle, no sputtering, no misfiring. Checking the transmission fluid, everything's good. All right. Yeah, guys, if this video is helpful, that's great. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. Appreciate it. That's pretty long, I know, but yeah, I had to put everything back together. In this video, my cooling fans kicked in, the cooling down the engine, beautiful, that's working. And the engine is holding the temperature, it's not overheating, all gauges working. Yeah. That's it for today. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. I'm going to take the vehicle for the first spin for the test drive. And I will tell you a few years later, she runs fantastic. Great build Honda CRV. I love it. Yeah. And uh, keep your old reliable Honda CRV on the road, and that vehicle won't ever let you down. Thank you so much again, take care, see you soon and bye bye now.